So we've looked at polar coordinates, and now we're going to take a look at um, graphs of polar equations. Um, and so we're going to look at different coordinates uh, that are part of a polar equation. And so just like when we're graphing regular equations, uh, rectangular equations, um, and even with the parametric equations that we did, we want to make a table. Okay, and so I'm going to make a table of my theta, my angle measure, and my r, okay? And um, so I'm going to start with theta being zero, and I'm gonna plug zero in, uh, zero degrees. Uh, well, we could do degrees or um, radians. Let's just do radians. Um, so when I plug in zero, sine of zero is zero, so I get zero for my r value. When I plug in pi over 6, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, and so when we multiply that by negative 4, we get negative 2. Uh, then our next, if we go around the unit circle, we have pi over 4, and when we uh, find the sine of pi over 4, that is uh, the square root of 2 um, over 2, and then when we multiply that by negative 4, we get negative 2 square root of 2. And then we'll plug in pi over 3. And uh, when we do that, uh, the sine of pi over 3 is negative, I'm sorry, is positive square root of 3 over 2. We multiply that by negative 4. We get negative 2 square root of 3. When we plug in pi over 2, uh, we get 1. And so that's going to give us a negative 4. Plug in 2 pi over 3. Um, again, we're going to get uh, square root of 3 over 2, multiply that by negative 4, so negative 2 square root of 3. And we plug in 3 pi over 4, and we get the same thing that we got for pi over 4, so negative 2 square root of 2. That should be a 2. So negative 2 square root of 2. And when we plug in 5 pi over 6, we get negative 2. And when we plug in pi, we get 0. So let's try plotting these points. So we have the point 0, 0. So here we haven't gone anywhere. Then we have the point negative 2. So we come out negative 2. And we go down to pi over 6. Okay. Then I'm going to graph my point uh, negative 2 square root of 2, which is out to like here, and then I come down pi over 4, so I'm about there. And then I want to graph, um, and so I'm going to get rid of that point just because I don't want that to be confusing later when we're going to connect our points. Then we come out to negative 2 square root of 3. And that's going to be about out here. And then our angle measure was pi over 3. Oh, I did that one wrong. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and graph. Our first point is 0, 0. We haven't gone anywhere. Our next point is negative 2, so we come out to negative 2, and then we rotate uh, counterclockwise to pi over 6. Okay. Then my next point is negative 2 square root of 2, so that's going to be almost about here. It's not quite... Um, there and then we are going to rotate that about 45 degrees so it's going to be out here somewhere I'm going to go ahead and erase that one point so that doesn't confuse us later when we're trying to connect our points um, again we're going to come out to negative 2 square root of 3 which is approximately there and the angle measure is pi over 3 so that's going to be right about there um, and Again, just like before, I'm going to erase that point. Um, and then the last, not the last, but we come out negative 4, so that's going to be about out here. And then we come down 
here to 3 pi over 2. I'm sorry, pi over 2, um, because it's the amount of rotation. And then again, I'm going to erase that. And then we can uh, move to negative 2 square root of two, uh, 3 to 2 pi over 3. So, so again, we're coming out, and we come out as far as the green one, and we are going to graph that point. Okay, and then the red, which was 3 pi over 4, so that goes right about there. And my 5 pi over 6, which was negative 2, it's going to go right there. And then it comes right back up uh, to that origin. And so if we connect these points, it's really, and I'm not a very good artist, but you should get something that looks like a circle. And so when we graph that polar equation, we end up with a circle. Okay, so let's take a look at some um, concepts of symmetry with polar uh, equations. Um, if we have the line theta equals pi over 2, so that's, that is this y-axis, um, then if we can rewrite, um, if, our, if we have the same r with a pi minus theta, um, then we end up having uh, symmetry with, respect, with respect to that line. Okay, um, so if your r's stay the same, but your theta, if you can subtract it from pi and you get the same r, then um, you have symmetry across that y-axis or the, the, really, because we're talking about polars, theta equals pi over 2. Um, if we have symmetry with respect to the polar axis, which is like that x-axis, uh, then your um, then if you make theta negative, you end up with the same thing, the same r value. And then finally, if we have symmetry with respect to the pole, and that is the origin, that's the pole, then that means that um, you can either have the same r and you can just add theta, I'm sorry, add pi to theta, or you can make r negative and theta stays the same. Okay, so those are just the, the different um, symmetries that we have on the, the polar um, coordinate plane. Um, and those are just uh, written right here in this box for you, um, so you can know how to test for symmetry. All right, so let's take a look at sketching this graph, um, and we'll take a look at symmetry that might be involved. All right, so we are going to first uh, write our table. And so we have theta and r, and we always start with 0 for theta. So if I plug in 0 for theta, then I get... 2 plus 0, which is 2. If I plug in pi over 6, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. 1 half of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. If I plug in pi over 4, I end up with 2 plus 2 square root of 2. Remember, we're just using the unit circle for this. Pi over 3, I get 2 plus 2 square root of 3. If I plug in pi over 2, I get 6. Um, if I plug in 2 pi over 3, I get 2 plus 2 square root of 3. If I plug in 3 pi over 4, I get 2 plus 2 square root of 2. 5 pi over 6 gives me 4. Pi gives me 2. 7 pi over 6 gives me 0. 5 pi over 4 gives me 2 minus 2 square root of 2. 4 pi over 3 
gives me 2 minus 2 square root of 3. And when I plug in 3 pi over 2, I get negative 2. All right, so let's take a look at what that graph is going to look like. So I have my coordinate plane here. It's down there. Um, and I have values that go really from about negative mm, 2 to 6 for my R's. And so I am going to One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And imagine that these are like rings. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so these are like rings, um, and we're going to rotate around them. So we have the point, we have two, zero, we have a, no rotation. Then we come out to four. And we're going to rotate up about 30 degrees. Then we're going to go to 2 plus 2 square root of 2, um, which is a little past 4. And we're going to rotate that to uh, about 45 degrees. And then we have 2 plus 2 square root of 3, which is a little more than 5. And so that's going to be right about here. And then pi over 2, uh, 6 goes up to pi over 2. And then we have some symmetry here about the um, y-axis or the uh, line uh, theta equals pi over 2. And so um, we're going to graph that. And so... that and all right so I'm not very good at drawing this but you can see where it's kind of symmetric I might have messed that up a little bit uh, I don't know that my units are perfectly straight um, or even I should say uh, and then we have the point pi or 2 and then pi and then we come down to 7 pi over 6 and 0 and so um, that's that point. Uh, and then we have 2 minus 2 square root of 2. And that's going to come down to like here somewhere. And then we also will have that point. And then we have um, negative 2, 3 pi over 2. So we're going to rotate that 270 degrees. And so really what this ends up looking like is this really interesting shape that has symmetry. Obviously, I didn't draw that very well. But it has symmetry uh, with respect to uh, the line theta equals pi over 2. Um, and we can look in the calculator for that as well. All right, so example number three, we want to analyze the graph. So we could graph this on our calculators. We can also take a look at the test for symmetry. Um, and so we can, um, we can run each of those tests. So for the first one, we're replacing r and theta by negative r theta. So we have negative r equals 4 cosine of theta. Oh wait, that was a negative theta. Well, let's just not do that. All right, so let's take a look at example number three. We want to analyze the graph of r equals 4 cosine theta. Um, and so we can take a look at uh, the three tests for symmetry that we had on the first page. Um, and we can test for each kind of symmetry. So the first one is where uh, theta equals pi over 2. 
And so we are going to replace r and theta with negative r, negative theta. And remember, we are testing for symmetry uh, about the line theta equals two, uh, pi over 2. So we're going to say, okay, negative r equals 4 cosine of negative theta. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative. So I get negative 4 cosine of negative theta. And then if you remember um, our uh, negative identities or uh, the even odd functions um, for trig, uh, cosine of negative theta is the same thing as the cosine of theta. Um, and so that cosine of negative theta can just become cosine of negative theta. And we do not get the same exact equation that we had initially. So that kind of symmetry is not the case for this um, equation. So now we're going to try the second kind of symmetry. And this is where we replace, this is the polar symmetry. Um, and so we're looking at polar symmetry over the polar axis. So we're going to replace r and theta with r and negative theta. Remember, this is like the x-axis, uh, but it is the polar axis since we are looking at polar coordinates. And so we have r equals 4 cosine of negative theta. And again, just like we said in the first part, uh, cosine is an even function. So the cosine of negative theta is equal to the cosine of theta. And that does give us the exact same equation. Uh, so it does have symmetry um, over the polar axis. And then now let's try the pole. So that's like the origin. So we have r and theta, and we're replacing that with negative r positive theta. So we have negative r equals 4 cosine of theta. And so then r is going to equal negative 4 cosine of theta. And remember, that was about the pole, not the polar axis, but the pole. That's like the origin. And it does not have that kind of symmetry uh, because it was not the exact same equation. All right. And then to find the zeros, so we know it has symmetry about the polar axis or the x-axis, if you will. Um, and if we want to find the zeros of r, oops, of r, that's where r is going to equal zero. And so um, really we want negative four, no, positive four cosine theta to equal zero. So then cosine of theta is going to equal zero. So then theta is going to be pi over two and three pi over two. And that is where um, your zeros are going to be. Uh, for this graph. Okay, so I just want to walk you through some different kinds of graphs um, on the polar uh, coordinate plane or whatever. Um, I just want to walk you through some special polar graphs. We have lamicons, um, and uh, they kind of look like little lima beans, if you will. That's how I kind of remember um, what uh, the name is, um, and if some, and they have an, an inner loop. Uh, you also have one that is more of this is a lamicon. You have a cardioid, uh, which is more of the heart shape. Uh, there's a dimpled lamicon, so it comes in, but it doesn't quite make a loop. And then there's the convex lamicon. You can see it kind of goes a little flat right there. Um, so it's not really a circle because it goes has that flat piece. Then we have these rose curves. I like these. I think they're fun. Um, and we know how many petals it's going to have, and each of these little loops is called a petal. Um, when your n is odd, so like your, your coefficient of theta, when it is odd, it's going to have an odd number, uh, or it's going to have that number of petals. So if it was 7 times theta, then it's going to have 7 petals. Um, and then if you have two n petals when n is even. All right, so in this case, n is equal to 4, so we have 4 theta, and so we have 2 times 4 is the number of petals, so we have 8 petals. 
Okay, so again, if n is odd, we have that many petals. And if it's even, we have twice the number um, of petals as that coefficient. Um, and then we have uh, circles and lemon escates. Circles we already know, um, but here are the equations that you can use for circles. Uh, the lemon escates are kind of fun. They're kind of like a figure eight. Um, and so those are the equations you would have for that. Um, you don't have to memorize these equations, um, but you will need to know how to plug them into the calculator and be able to sketch the graph and recognize what they are. All right, so now we're going to take a look at how to graph uh, these polar um, equations on the calculator. So the first thing we want to do is go to mode, and we want to make sure that we have polar equations um, selected. And so now we've got it selected. So when we go to y equals, notice that it's now r. And so we can type in our 3 cosine of 3 theta. Um, and you could change it from radians to degrees, degrees to radians. It doesn't really matter. Um, but what we do want to do, depending on what mode, so let's see what mode I'm in. I'm in radians. So when I go to my window, I want to make sure that my um, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, which it does. Uh, so the step looks like it's pi over uh, 24, I think. Um, my x minimum is negative 10. My x maximum uh, is 10. My x scale is 0. My y minimum is negative 10. My maximum is 10 and scale is 1. So we'll just use that and see what it looks like. And we can always uh, change it if we want. Um, and so notice you get this little, little petal. And remember that um, when we... Uh, we're looking at these coefficients. That was odd. So that told us the number of petals we should have. And so actually, I'm going to change my window, and I'm going to make my x minimum. Uh, I'm going to make my x minimum. We'll make that negative 4. And I'll make my maximum 4. And I'm going to do the same thing for my y values. The minimum is 4, maximum, I'm sorry, negative 4, maximum is 4, and then we graph again. And there you go, it's a little bit bigger, um, so you can see what that looks like. And it looks a little distorted. That's just because of the way the window is, um, the, the ratio, the proportion of the length to the height of that window. And so that's just why it looks a little weird. Um, and notice that we have r squared equals 16 times the cosine of 2 theta. So I need to take the square root of that. Um, and remember that when we do that, we need to take the square root, and we need to um, do plus or minus. Uh, so I have this negative square root of 16 cosine of 2 theta. Close my parentheses. And now I'm going to type in the other one as well. So I have... Oh, wait, that's not a, well, I can do that. Um, and then square root of 16 cosine of 2 theta, and close my parentheses, and then I can click on graph, and it actually goes off my grid. Actually, no, it doesn't. Um, it's just taking a minute. Um, and so you can see that it ends up being um, a lemon escape. Okay, and so this is what our graph looks like. Um, it's a lemon escape, but it's not quite finished. Uh, so that's how you can use the calculator to graph your polar equations.